All right. Um, <clears throat> so some people saw the video where I had uh, two Game Boys linked with uh, these pocket operator <clears throat> uh, little synthesizers from Teenage Engineering, and they were all operating in sync together. Uh, which was a question that I saw over and over and over again in forums as I was trying to figure out like, okay, well, I've got these really neat little pocket operator synthesizers. How do I, I understand how to sync these together. And I even understand how to sync one Game Boy to sync with these. But what if you want an extra Game Boy? Um, and there's a lot of ideas around how to utilize MIDI and these other options that are totally prevalent uh, and, and they would work but there's a lot of wires a lot of connection um and even then there's still some genuine confusion about how to do this so i thought that i would start fiddling around and seeing if there was something to be said about this input output that is inside of uh analog input output that's inside of lsdj so i started looking into it and there's a section inside of the manual about how to make your own uh audio sync cables um out of the DMG link cable. And I had a spare DMG link cable. Uh, and basically the entire system can operate on just utilizing LSDJ's analog input output uh, settings, which we'll go over a little bit. Um, but surprisingly enough, there's just almost nothing online about how to actually pull this off. And that's shocking because it is scary easy. Um, it's one of the easiest things I've seen. And in this method, you can link as many Game Boys up as you like. Uh, not only as many Game Boys up as you like, but as many pocket operators as you like, or anything that'll take an analog sync input um, to uh, sync, like the, the Korg uh, little systems as well. So this isn't just for pocket operators. This is literally anything that takes an analog sync. Um, I don't like wordy... Uh, YouTube how-to videos, and this just became one, so my apologies. Uh, so these were already done. I, these are what I used, and basically this was one DMG uh, link cable for a game for my Game Boy that I had had, and I just cut it in half. Now, lucky for uh, people who wanted to see a video, um, I wanted to upgrade my plugs anyways from these because these are actually this sleeve is a little bit too tight this is a weirdly thick uh cable sleeve here so i want to replace it anyways and so we're going to get to do that um so i'm going to fire up my uh soldering iron here and go over some of the basics while that heats up um i set it to about 300 um from a temperature uh whatever your solder uh is supposed to be rated for just use that um and so i'm actually going to take these apart and we're going to go over how these are built uh and actually how i came up with the solution of how what ports go to where because i will say this uh as you'll as you'll notice if i can pull the sleeve off and i'll probably end up breaking it yep i just heard it break uh in doing so because it's just so tight uh you'll see that i used the blue wire and the orange wire uh, on one and then if I can pop that off oh I ended up using the blue wire and the orange wire on the other so that means the send and receive are operating on the same orange wire now this actually goes against what's currently in the LSDJ manual um, I started testing the ports I, I actually built the input and output wires to spec in the manual based on the diagrams that I found and then matching those against diagrams online. Uh, and they didn't, they didn't work like they say they worked. Um, and the way that I proved it was simply by taking, where is it? I, ha I took a, a patch cable here, um, this patch cable, and I cut the ends off uh, and I effectively made it um, just a testing cable, plugged it into an amplifier and you can hear the click. And we're gonna go over that now. So I'm gonna plug this test cable into the amplifier, so that's now a live wire. It's it's low voltage, don't worry, it's fine. Uh, and I'm gonna boot up this Game Boy with the link cable in it. Let's get this out of the way. And in fact, I'm going to, well, just to be safe, let's cut this. <clears throat> well, you know, I, I don't actually need to strip this further back than I want, so I'm not going to, but when you cut yours open this is going to have a bunch of different 
colored um, wires in it. And uh, you're going to have to, because I do believe that the colors may vary on what they do. Um, but for me, it was orange and blue. Uh, and I cut all, you'll see that I cut all of the other accessible data and the shielding ground off. Um, but effectively, you know, let me plug this in now. And we're going to boot up LSDJ. Here we go. I'll even turn some of that volume up. Okay, so we're in LSDJ. Um, and if this won't focus, then we're just going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I can uh, mess with contrast and get that more uh, better for you. Okay, not really, not too good, but it'll be good enough to where you'll be able to see what's important. Um, you're going to go up to the menu, and you're going to go to your sync. i got to do this all backwards. Uh, and you're going to set your sync on this one to audio out and then you're going to set your clicks if you're we're going to leave this click alone for right now but this click if you're using pocket operators will be set to 0c which happens to be 12 um, in the hex system that they use uh, it's basically twice as fast as the Korg units so there is that to take in consideration uh, and so now it's set to you know I'm going to set it to 0c because we're using these anyways uh, so now that's set to zero C. That's what your settings will be for. Um, oh, come on. That's what your settings will be for uh, the pocket operators. And now if I go back to the page and hit play, music will play out of the Game Boy as you can hear it. But what you're really going to hear is if I take the blue and the ground to the speaker here and I just touch them, Well, this just became an experimental video. I don't know why that's not making the sound. This is the system that I... You know what might have happened? Let me do a reboot with the DMG cable already plugged in. Well, now this just became an exploratory video. So, that's what we're gonna do. I don't know why that just did that, because it was working yesterday. So let's 
let's strip this back and see what we're working with. Now, we know that the grounding shield is legitimately the grounding shield. That That's a given. So we're going to base off of that for ground for a little while um, and double check that maybe something got crossed. I don't know. Um, we will find out. So effectively what you have to do, this is good because this will actually show you how my, my method of figuring out what wire did what because the other option is you gotta try and trace them and you're trying to get inside of this little DMG link cable port and that's no fun. Um, so this just became a little bit longer of a video, sorry about that. I'm going to strip all of these just back a little bit. I'm basically just going to be testing and listening for a click. Um, so, you know, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use a different patch cable that has been already cut. This is what it looks like because um, it is a stereo cable. It's just what I had. So you've got ground and a hot and a cold, but you're dealing with such low voltage here that it doesn't really make, make any difference. Hit start here. We're listening for the click. It should be sending a click. Okay, that's your data. That's not the click. The green is your data. Okay. So you hear that click there. I'm gonna turn it up just so you can hear it, make sure you hear it. And you're annoying. That click is the audio sync, okay? And there must have been a short crossover. I might have split a, a wire or something when I was building it the first time because it was coming out of the orange cable. Don't know why. Um, so that red is your receive. Uh, now the other option is, because I don't know what's inside of these cables, this might have there might be a twist in this, and this might have been the uh, the receive cable, and that's why it's different. But we're gonna go with this because this is good practice, anyways. So now I know that this red cable is my send cable. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the blue and make sure that that's still ground. If it if I still hear the click, then blue is an acceptable ground, and I do. It's actually a little, it's even a little bit cleaner. Um, so we're going to use blue and red here. And we do not need, effectively, we do not need the rest of these little cables. So we're just going to cut them off like so. And get all of that mess out of there. Um, we're going to attach these, and hopefully these are, somewhat decent cables uh, or connectors. I liked them because they had a flexible spring um, as opposed to the really taut uh, plastic that was just unmovable. It was it was actually binding it so I'm glad to be to be doing this. Um, so now we're down to the red and the blue, your ground and your click. Uh, Make sure you put your sleeve over first. There's a little plastic doodad. Uh, all right, I'll slide that on. Um, let's just absolutely make sure that I am not crazy. And we'll do, again, blue on your ground. There's your click. You should be able to hear it on both sides. It doesn't really make any difference. Now, what you do want to do here, so now we have that isolated. We know where that is. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you are connecting to your tip and your uh, the tip of the uh, eighth inch jack. Um, and this is your ground here. 
this is a new jack, so I'm going to do something that is unnecessary for you to do. And that is I'm going to t just double sh make sure, um, because sometimes you get weird stuff, that the that I know where the tip in the sleeve is. Uh, ultimately, if you get it wrong, all you really have to do is just unsolder it and flip one of the points. Um, they should be pretty standard uh, for everyone, but I'm just going to quickly multimeter this. Um, I don't expect you to have this. You don't. Know, you do not need this uh, to make this functional. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's going to be. That's what I thought it was. That means it's correct. Um, so, because this is a stereo one, uh, the one that is connected to the center post, see if I can get that in focus there, which is going to be this one, is going to be your tip, and this is going to be your ground, and we're just going to solder tip and ground to that. Let's get this out of the way. I'll get you better a seat to the show. Um, all right, so I don't ever claim to be the best person in soldering, but I will get the job done, and that's what matters. And this wasn't turned on the entire time. Great. So while that heats up for a second, um, let's talk about the pocket operators. Once this is put in place, remember you set this to zero C as your click out. That's the rate in which it clicks. Um, that is what's necessary on the input here. Then you set these to receive its click input uh, and output, and you can daisy chain these as many times as you want. What's nice about this method is if you have multiple Game Boys and you do this on multiple Game Boys and you have a little splitter like this, this is just the mono headphone splitter. Um, these are really cool because I don't I actually need to figure out what the brand of these are, but I bought these in a local synth shop here in uh, Oregon. Uh, they're magnetic, so you can just like stick them to a side of something that's metal, or they'll actually stack and stand in one place. Uh, so these are super cool um, because you can then just keep splitting over and over again. Of course, you're adding more and more cables every time you do that, but that's par for the course. Well... So the first function of engineering that is super helpful, just gotta plug the stupid thing in. Um, I found the source of our problem. Why isn't this getting hot? Well, you idiot, you didn't plug it in. So now we plug it in. This is a full tutorial on how to be an idiot with a soldering iron. Okay. Um, so we're plugged in, we're turned on, we're turned up. And we know what goes to where. Um, now there's different ways you can do this part. Uh, I, I like to use the guide holes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just put, uh, well, let's do it the right way. How about that? Let's support this one over here. We'll pull this way back. And we'll use these little guide holes to kind of get this started. I don't want to re-solder this a bunch of times, so um, it's, it's embarrassing. And I've already made enough mistakes on this video. I didn't even want to make this video, but people asked for it, so I will. That's the thing about this is you're you end up just kind of trialing airing it, but I am really shocked that this solution was not just already discussed ad nauseum because it was so so simple. Okay. Ooh, that's hot. Let's get these out of the way. There we go. 
and I did not pre tin these wires. Um, maybe I should have. Uh, typically, with audio wires, I don't really worry too much about it. If I'm just being honest. Um, Well, the easiest way to tell is if this was successful. Uh, is to take a headphone jack, and we're gonna just play it and see if we hear that clicking sound. And get rid of, the, unplug that, put the headphone jack in. Ooh, that's some ground hum. Something's wrong there. Let's just make sure. It's got a clean tick though. I don't actually care what the signal sounds like if it goes away when I hit play. So it's got a little bit of a ground hum in there, but that could just be the amplifier. Um, let's try. Here's the thing. Um, with the lighting, I normally don't worry about shooting a video, so I'm not really too worried about light. So, but I'm gonna need a little bit better light so I can actually see. Uh, so here comes the headlamp. Um, this is just the process that I make. You guys wanted the video, so here you go. Um, yeah, that ground doesn't look, it looks like I did a cold ground on that by accident. Um, that just basically means that it didn't get a good enough connection. Like the solder took it, but maybe there's a bubble in it. Something's wrong. Uh, and so now I'm on the hunt for my tweezers. Because these things are hot and tiny. And I don't know where they are, so I'm just going to use this little screwdriver. Because you make do. a lot better. Okay, so got that. Good measure, let me take a look at this. Looks correct. Okay, let's listen to it one more time and see what we got. So, hum is still there, but it goes away with the click, so I'm guessing that's just going to be... Oh, no, okay, it's gone. So, before we completely button this up, let's just make sure that the sink actually works. Um, let's find the fun one. All right, here's the pocket arcade. Okay, and we're gonna select some random pattern. Cool. I'm gonna set this to side two. Set it to play, you notice it's not playing. And then when I hit play, let's turn it down. <laughs> you might be able to tell. It's faint because I'm not running any of these, these through speakers, but this is synced with that now. So this now works. If I hit stop, let me turn it up so you can hear it. It stops. Now, when that happens, you actually have to hit play twice to get to go back to the beginning of the loop, otherwise it's gonna just pick up where it was. But that sync cable works. I'll be back for the second half of how do you make the other one. <laughs> 